you all. Does the Nigerians say Happy New Month on this November 1st? This very cold morning, windy morning, difficult to get out of bed morning. All Saints Day, of course. A few announcements. Um, my Sunday School class will meet today. We'll meet in the fellowship hall, so we have space. So we're not in each other's faces. I have to start getting more creative to do things so we're not in each other's faces. Because normally, the whole purpose of our class is to get in each other's faces. So, got to figure this out a bit. Also, Lisa Rhodes wants everyone to know that she has the, um, the list of things to buy for the Christmas shopping. And remember, we asked because we, we have 100, right? Is that right, Hannah? Yeah, so the youth pick on between 40 and 50 are asking that other people in the congregation take tags as well and do that shopping. Uh, what is the deadline for that? Uh, 21st. 21st. Before the 21st would be great. Okay. Right? We have to deliver them all. So we'll, we'll put a box here in the fellowship hall and we'll figure out how to do it. But if you could get it to the church before the 21st, um, really appreciate it. My family is taking on, we'll take 10 tags. Uh, Kinsley, the five-year-old, has requested a boy and a girl to shop for. So, encourage you all to take some tags. We know that there's a lot more need this year because of COVID. Any other announcements I'm forgetting? The nuts are in. I delivered them to my family. I thought my arms were going to fall off. I didn't realize how much candy they ordered. So your nuts are in. So see one of the ladies to get those. <clears throat> Adult Sunday School you're meeting today in the library. I saw it's very well spaced out with hand sanitizer. So looks good. Anything else?
Please stand if you're able for our call to worship. Give us a prayer. Come, God is leading us home. Come, God is leading us home. Home to a safe and prosperous place. Come, God is leading us home. There is no more hunger or thirst. Come, the Lord is leading us home. Our lives are the Lord. Come, the Lord is leading us home. Our souls find rest at last. Let us pray. God, our God, God and protector, as we gather today in your holy house, open our minds and souls and hearts that we may be inclined to hear the gentle direction of your Spirit in our lives. Help us follow you as you lead us to the land you have created for us, where we may dwell with you and in you. Amen.
The concerns we shared this morning, Mr. Zach Denman had a procedure to relocate his ankle, and it's my understanding he has a break on his tibia and fibula. Of course, Mr. Zach Denman is the grandson of Marvin Wright. Your grandkids are always doing something, Marvin. Um, so I want to pray for Zach and also his parents and sister Abby as they tend to him and also JC who will probably help. Abby is actually take care of Zach. Abby is offered to take care of Zach. She's been taking care of Zach all day. That is helpful. <laughs> what a joy Abby is. You are all surprised. <laughs> 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 Tell us what you really think, JC. <laughs>
Let us pray. Or no. Let us not pray. Let's have Beth and Judy come up now. Sure. Regarding Susie Beamer, she did uh, get a clearance of no heart issues from her doctor. That was part of her concern. They're doing uh, additional blood now to see if they can further define things. Correct, Dick? Do you hear what I said? Okay. <laughs> He's agreeing. All right. Uh, Austin Russell uh, is in need of prayer. Uh, interestingly, yesterday, there was an ambulance that appeared at their house, and it was because their son-in-law was at Kroger's, and they called him asking to come over and check on him. Uh, and Austin remains in the, uh, suffering from some balance issues and some other things. He is cancer-free, though, in the lymphoma. The lymphoma. Perspective, and uh, that's, that's good. Uh, lastly, a joy and a concern on the budget. Uh, we are in the process of preparing the budget, but before that, we have to receive all the pledge cards back. Uh, the joy is that they've been distributed. We've got about half of them back, but there is still a lot we don't have. So if you haven't done yours, we would appreciate that. And then on the budget, for those with line item responsibility, please uh, submit that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Gracious God, thank you for this day, for our ability to gather together. God, we know that All Saints Sunday is not the easiest of Sundays, individually, as families, and as a church family. Because the more that we journey with people on this thing called life, the harder it is to say goodbye. May God, we stand here, we sit here before you today in thanksgiving for those lives mentioned. We give thanks for their belief in you, their love of you, and that you have always been their God and continue to be. God, we pray for all of those mentioned this morning during our concerns. God, we pray for those and give thanks for those joys. And God, as we approach this really insane election day, may we commit being the people you know we are. No, no matter what happens, no matter who we like or we don't like, no matter what policy we like or don't like, that we will always 
be the children of God, and we will love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Because politicians are just elected officials, the real movement, the real change that happens in the world comes from people like sitting in this congregation who commit themselves to being a good neighbor. And we continue to pray for those fighting COVID, not only those who have it, but those who are in the healthcare field in many capacities. God, we know that it continues to be a scary thing around the world and we don't have any answers. But God, we ask for wise discernment and we also ask for patience. God, we give thanks for Jesus the Christ, your Son, who every day issues the invitation to follow him. And every day we have that choice. It is his name we pray. Amen.
face mask, Dr. Wright. And if you have not noticed this face mask, it is the most appropriate dental face mask I have ever seen. This morning, our scripture comes from Psalm 107, verses 1 to 7 and 33 to 37. Thanksgiving for deliverance from many troubles. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to an inhabited town. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way until they reached an inhabited town. He turns rivers into desert, springs of water into thirsty ground, a fruitful land into a salty waste because of the wickedness of its inhabitants. He turns a desert into pools of water, a parched land into springs of water, and there he lets the hungry live, and they establish a town to live in. They sow fields and plant vineyards and get a fruitful yield. A man was the sole survivor of a shipwreck, and he was able to make a raft from some of the ship's cargo and finally drifted to a deserted island, which right now in the time of COVID sounds like the most fantastic thing I have ever heard. Anyone finds an island and wants to start a small community spread out, let me know. On that island, the man constructed a makeshift shelter and lived on what little food he had been able to salvage from the wreckage. And time after time, he tried in vain to attract the attention of passing ships. Finally, he saw a ship approaching more closely, and hurriedly, he signaled a fire. So he lights the fire, and he thinks, they will see me. And to his dismay, the ship passed by and was quickly fading from sight. Accidentally, the flames from the signal fire set the thatched roof of the shelter on fire, and the man watched helplessly as all of his provisions burned to ash. All was lost, he thought. He couldn't see how his life could last much longer. But then he noticed that the ship which had passed by him had turned around and was approaching the island again. And to his relief, he was seen by the crew and rescued. Once on board, he went to the captain to express his thanks. He asked, what caused you to turn around after you had already gone by me? The captain answered, when we saw the smoke you made by setting your shelter on fire, we knew we had to come back. The very thing that seemed to seal his doom was actually the means of the man's delivery. The captain of the ship thought that the man had intentionally set his shelter on fire to alert someone that he needed help, which would be a risky gamble. Now, I'm not saying that we need to light our shelters on fire to receive help. Hear me, Eli, Logan, Isaiah, and JC. When I say we do not need, and Cruz, and Cooper, and Kerrigan, we do not need to light our shelters on fire to receive help. I always feel like there's some disclaimer in my sermons. But we often have to make movements and decisions on receiving help, and that's what the captain thought the man was doing. This morning's psalm is about those who cry out to the Lord in times of trouble, in times of distress. The psalm was probably written after Judah had gone into captivity and exile in Babylon, and then later returned to the land of Palestine. In Psalm 106, 47, there's a cry, Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the nations. And in Psalm 107, the request has been answered. A psalmist wants to teach their readers that God can be trusted in times of trial. Psalm 107 starts with one of the most famous lines 
in the Bible. If you go into a Christian bookstore, this is guaranteed to be printed on half of the things in it. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. We can recite it in our sleep. Well, it's easy to give thanks to the Lord when things are going well, right? Thanks, God. But if God's love is steadfast, that means it's unwavering, it's loyal. And it's not just something that's around when things are fantastic, but around when things are shattered, broken, at their worst. The psalm goes on to say, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those who are redeemed from trouble and gathered in the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in the desert waste, finding no way to an inhabited town, hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way until they, were, they reached an inhabited town. So we get this picture of a group of people in exile. These people who are trying to find a way out of their suffering. They're lost. They're stumbling around. Maybe they're going around in circles like Roger got us stuck in a roundabout in St. Louis last fall. It was worth the head shake. And the people realized that they need to call upon the Lord in their time of distress, and we're told that the Lord leads them. They reach out and accept the help. Then from verses 1 to 7, this morning's passage jumps to, from thir to 33 to 37. Again, not sure why the people would put the lectionary readings together, take out large chunks. But a lot of it is, I mean, it's the same, it's just different imagery. He turns rivers into a desert, springs of water into thirsty ground, a fruitful land into a salty waste because of the wickedness of its inhabitants. He turns a desert into pools of water, a parched land into springs of water, and there he lets the hungry live, and they establish a town to live in, and they sow fields and plant vineyards, and get a fruitful yield. For a people who have been in exile, they wouldn't want their water to dry up. They would not want a fruitful land to suddenly not be able to bear food. They've been away from their land with no roots, no basis for their community, nothing of their own. And the psalmist's opinion is that in order to have good things, one must turn away from wickedness, from sin, from evil, and rely on God. Trust God. Put hope in God. The entirety of Psalm 107 is about thanksgiving for deliverance from many troubles. I love that the psalmist didn't say deliverance from one trouble or specifically name a trouble because when you say deliverance from many troubles, no matter who reads the psalm, who sings it, who writes it down, if you're one of the people who likes to write down scripture, no matter how you interact with the scripture, you are connected. We are connected. Many troubles. When we hear the word deliverance, you might think that suddenly that means that whatever problem we have just goes away like it's magic. We don't ever have to deal with that again. That would be so fantastic. But for me, I think there are times that deliverance can mean that, but also what I think Psalm 107 is getting at, and that is that deliverance means that we have troubles, they're magically not going to go away, especially if we ignore them, but the deliverance is, is that we don't have to face them alone, that our steadfast God gives us a place for relief, for rest, for comfort, for guidance. Deliverance from carrying the weight alone. Nowhere in the Bible, nowhere all capitals bolded, 
Underline, nowhere in the Bible does it say that human beings will never have to endure any suffering or hardships. Ever. Nowhere. What the Bible promises us is that we are not alone in this life or in the next. That we have a God who is loving and always present with us. A God who always wants to take care of us. And I think Psalm 107 reminds us to reside in the Lord at all times because the Lord resides in us, whether we acknowledge that or not. But it's not a matter of being that shipwreck survivor who had shelter and accidentally lighted on fire to get rescued. Our residing has to be purposeful and meaningful. What does it mean to reside? You say, I reside at, and you give your address. We all learn that in elementary school, right? It means to be present. It means to dwell somewhere where we live, where we actually live, not just where we sleep and we have our stuff. This is where we're most comfortable and most vulnerable. This is where we show the parts of ourselves that we do not want other people to see, but God sees it all. On this All Saints Sunday, we celebrate and remember those who not only resided with the Lord while they were here on this earth, but they reside in the Lord in a life beyond this that we can't even imagine. No matter how short or long their lives, each of the souls remembered this morning lived and live with God, a continual dwelling. Death is not a sudden change of address. You don't have to go put in a form with the post office and say, oh, I'm not dwelling there anymore. I'll be here. It's not a change of address, and then we're suddenly living with God. What the psalmist is reminding us this morning is that we've been residing with God ever before, even before we were on this earth. Even before our parents created us, we were residing with God, and we continue to reside with God when we are here, and we continue to reside with God when we are not in this life as we know it. And all I can say is that those who I knew well on this morning's All Saint list, which was quite a few, knew that, understood that, grasped that, Lived that. But knowing that our loved ones are residing with the Lord doesn't mean that there isn't sorrow here. It doesn't mean that there's not grief. It doesn't mean that there isn't distress or anger or a multitude of other emotions that we have. We can grieve deeply but be comforted that our loved one resides with the Lord. We can be angry that someone has died, but at the same time be relieved in the fact that they are with God. We can be in distress by also feeling delivered in terms of knowing that we're never alone. For good or worse, God created us human beings to have complex thoughts and emotions. And we're going to feel them all at some point, and sometimes we'll feel them all at once. And that's always super fun. I end this morning's word with a blessing from a book called The Cure for Sorrow, a book of blessings for time, times of grief by Jane Richardson. Kim Ryan actually suggested this book to me last year, and I picked it up and put it down over the course of a year. But I want to read this morning a blessing titled Blessing for Carrying Long Sorrow, because I think it's a perfect summation for Psalm 107. When long sorrow, when the endless bearing of grief, when sadness has been walk, when sadness has been waking with you for what seems like forever, and going to bed with you for what approximates an eternity, when your heart has become an ancient timepiece, its beating measuring ages and eons, ticking the turning of centuries, and the stars have nothing on you for long enduring. May there come a moment when time falls away. May there come a space between the beats of your heart when you know your burden carried. 
May there come a gap between your pain painful breaths when you sense your own self born, unalone, in your endless sorrowing, no longer solitary. As if you could ever have been left in your grief, as if you could have ever been for one moment abandoned to this weight, unencompassed by the love more ancient still than the sorrow you bear. This ends this morning's word. Thanks be to God. And if you're thinking, maybe I'd like to check out that book, I'll give you the title of the last one. Of course, we come to this time of offering. Of course, as always, our offering plates are all around the sanctuary. And so let us stand and let us sing the doxology and give thanks for gifts.
remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and he said, This is the cup of the covenant for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we take this bread and we take this cup and proclaim his death until he comes again, the gifts of God for the children of God, all are welcome at the Lord's table. Almighty God, we meet here as witnesses of your shepherds who led us to this table. We come with thankful hearts for this place of new beginnings. We are thankful that you see us for what's in our hearts and our potential, not for our past and our outward appearance. At this table, through Jesus Christ, you have led us from exile of the Spirit to new life and new hope. Now we come to this table, Christ has said, accepting the invitation to be part of his family. As we break the bread, may it heal the broken places in our lives and relationships. As we eat the bread, may it sustain us and nourish us, not just for our own needs, but that we may better serve you and others more faithfully. As we go into the world, may we be reminded of those who have led us here and impacted our lives so much. In your Son's holy name, amen. Now may we partake of the bread together. On this day of remembrance, we celebrate the lives of the eight saints who passed from our presence into your kingdom this year. We know that Jesus came into the world to become our Redeemer, taking our sin and personally taking our punishment when he was crucified, so we have the chance for eternal life in heaven. We believe our earthly saints are now with you as their reward for faithfulness to you. Let us pause to remember those who are now at rest. Having confessed your name before the church, may they be forever blessed. When Jesus turned water into wine as his first miracle, he proved his power to his disciples so they would believe in his divinity as their Messiah. He came so that we might experience eternal life and life more abundantly. Our communion wine symbolizes Jesus' shed blood, buying our salvation. Let us be thankful as we remember the prayer he gave his disciples when they gathered. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now partake of the cup.
be a, I don't even know how to describe what this week is probably going to be like. We know it's going to be crazy. So we commit ourselves to being the light, to being the peace, and to being the children of God we are called to be. Go in peace and go in love.